everyone, it's late August in the garden and I'm going to be doing some trimming off of some of the dead foliage. We like to keep it clean underneath so that we prevent some of the disease from starting. Uh, I'm going to be pulling out what needs to come out, what's uh, overdue and not really producing much food or kind of past due or bolted, and then putting in some new seed starts that I have growing indoors in the house. And one note, while I'm over here by the cosmos, is that because of the rain last night, um, some of them, some of the branches have fallen down and pretty much completely broken off. So, unfortunately, even with all these pretty flowers, we're going to be having to take um, some of these cosmos stems and compost them. Okay, right away I'm seeing the radicchio. It, the leaves are a lot bigger than what we like to eat, so in order to make room for more starts, I'm just going to be pulling these out. Oh, that one might need a shovel. <laughs> and some of that can be harvested and eaten, some of the smaller stuff that's on the inside there. There's a lot of these kale that I really haven't gotten around to trimming the stems that don't look very good off. Some of them drag on the ground, they pick up disease, bugs start to attack it. So yeah, anything that's kind of more deadish, I'm going to be taking off of there. Okay, well, let's see if these will come out. These are starting to bolt. So this is this radicchio is called early Perdiso. Yeah, that one, there's not even anything on there that can be saved, so that's going to be going straight into the compost pile. Now, when I planted these in the winter, they had like a really dark red you can kind of see it coming on here. So when the new ones came out, they were really dark red and really nice for salads. But this is kind of just too big and bitter to be used for anything. Take out the marker sticks. This is a different type of marker stick that I tried this year. I'll just pause for a minute here. Just keep it rolling. Tour that is. Who cares? Okay, I'll go again now. So this is a new type of marker stick that I tried this year, and it's done with a, a paint pen. I also tried 
a plant marker, which is more like a felt or a permanent marker. And some of the, uh, let's see, like this one, I think. Yeah, this one's more of the point, the um, permanent marker, and that's the paint marker, so you can see they look a little bit different. I did do some that were uh, burned in with a wood burning tool, but it just was taking so long that I kind of gave up on doing it that way. Uh, so this is Pointed Sweetheart. You can see we haven't gotten in here to get the dead stuff out for a while. Hmm. And that's the cabbage in there. So I'll be harvesting those cabbage. I think we have most of them already harvested. And then because it's so full, we don't tend to get a lot of weeds in here. But the ones I find tend to be pretty large, like this wild clematis. Those go everywhere. Keep trying to get rid of them. And then also some tomato seedlings that pop up here and there. So, let's see, yeah, there's more of these Cosmos, unfortunately, that have fallen down that we'll have to take out. And I'm going to run over there and bring back the starts and show you the starts that I'll be putting in. Okay, so here are some of the starts that I have been putting out in the garden for our fall winter crops. And we have a broccoli called Dechicchio, it has little sprout broccolis. You cut them off the top and then the bottom ones sprout again. I have two types of kohlrabi. There are some gold beets. And let's see. I also have some things that I just want to try to grow towards the end of summer. And hopefully they don't bolt too quickly. I have some cilantro and basil and lettuce, and then there are a few thyme plants uh, for to add to the herb garden because we've been eating lots of the thyme this year. In fact, I'll show you where that one is over here. Over in here, I've also been taking out a lot of the nasturtiums. These are starting to get aphids. This one only has a few, but a lot of the ones that were over in the shady areas had a lot of aphids. Here are the little thyme plants that I'm going to be putting in, and here's the thyme plant that we've been eating off. So I'll probably put some in there some in my kitchen garden in the house, and then some around the herb garden. Okay, and next, I'm gonna show you some of the work that I've already done. Okay, so over here in this plot that I share with a neighbor of mine, I've already done some of the cleanup. There were a bunch of beans. One variety was Marvel of Venice and then there was one sort of bush bean. I don't know what it was called. And so those were at the end of their season. I tore all those out and I planted some pea seeds. I also planted some cucumber seeds. I've heard some people planting them and then they still have time to produce towards the end of summer. I don't think it's going to work, but I thought I'd give it a try. Okay, so 
coming over this way. This is just set here, actually temporarily. I was gifted these yesterday, so I will be setting them up probably for tomato plants next year or maybe getting more creative because you can actually set these up either flat or semi-flat or maybe even take them apart at the edges. So my creative wheels are spinning for that, but I'll show you the other spots that I've cleaned up over here. So this area had a whole bunch of radicchio, a few more green onions, and a whole bunch of calendula plants with kind of uh, dead flowers on them or seed heads. I'll be saving some of the seeds to plant next year. Although calendula just pops up here wherever it likes. Most of the ones over here came up as volunteers and I just let some of them grow. So I cleared those out and I've put in some broccoli, kohlrabi, and beets, spinach, and these beets were already planted under what I had before so that when I take those out I already have some beets coming back up. Then there's some lettuce down in here and I have some pak choy and some dwarf bok choy and there's a few more kohlrabi in there and then towards the far corner there are some kohlrabi So over here, I have some rutabagas that I will be harvesting now. Actually, there's only a couple left. Uh, they were pretty popular for soup. And what else do we have? one more kohlrabi left. Yeah, so that one, those were popular, that's why I'm planting so many more. And then I'm gonna be pulling out more of the calendula that's on that side and planting more of the starts that I showed you before. And that's, that's about it, except for one more section up there that I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so over in this plot, which I call the herb plot, although we do have some vegetables growing in here, I pulled out some yellow turnips that were in here. I think they were called Golden Globe was the variety. And on that side, I pulled out, uh, that was the Cicchio broccoli. And over here were some collards that weren't quite as well stu suited to our area. They, the variety was called Champion. They tended to wilt when the sun came out. But we have another collard variety over there called Cascade Glaze, and the shininess seems to make it so they don't wilt like these ones do in the sun. Um, and so I've planted more broccoli, kohlrabi, and a whole section of leeks down there. I'll probably put some beets or something in between those, and just kind of put in these tomato cages in temporarily over my starts so that I remember they're there and I don't trample them. Okay, so I'm gonna go over 
to the other side there. These over here are a sprouting broccoli called Santi. It's a purple broccoli. And I just harvested a bunch of the little mini stalks. You can kind of see here how they're coming up with these little mini branches. So I just harvested a bunch of those there. These have a bunch of bugs, white flies. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them. This hasn't, this one is just now coming out with the broccoli. So I don't know how buggy that broccoli is going to be. It seems to be more of them on the leaves, so maybe I can still use those. And, uh, well, I guess we can go look over here a little bit in another plot. So back over in here, we still have a bunch of peppers that are producing. We've got some nice big peppers down there. And these are the Hungarian hot wax paprika peppers. Got some little mini bell peppers. And they're crowded a little bit by some of these taller marigolds. Next time I'll put more of the little short marigolds in between. I already actually pulled out a couple of these huge marigolds from there. I do have several varieties of celery in there. I kind of, as an experiment, planted them under the asparagus to see how they would do that way. And they're still looking good. We just cut the, the, a lot of the um, asparagus back so they don't have as much shade as they did. But these one over here are still not bolting yet, whereas a neighbor that planted his in the full sun, he planted his after I planted mine, but his bolted way sooner. I do have some that I planted earlier than these over here that I'll show you, and those are starting to bolt. So this is the celery that I planted first. This variety is called Ventura. I think it's pretty well suited to this climate. These were actually plants that I had grown in the house and were full-size celery in my indoor kitchen garden before I planted them out here. So that was another experiment. Looks like just this one is starting to bolt. And the variety over there, only one of those, I think, is Ventura that is, is bolting. And so these still are not. And these make some nice big celery stalks. I like to use them for soups when they were in the house and I was cutting off the smaller uh, branches. I was eating the skinnier stems and then the leaves in my salad. I really liked that. So I am hoping to plant some what they call cutting celery, which are really skinny stalks with little leaves and to try those to see if I like those in my salad. And yeah, they have some over in a couple of gardens nearby. And I could probably go and taste them there and then see if I like them, but 
yeah, I'm pretty sure I want to give them a try anyway. So that is my update here in the garden in late August. Thank you.